the iconic Vern Lundquist, who has a new book out called Play by Play, calling the wildest games in sports from SEC football to college basketball, the Masters, and more, joins us in studio. Vern, how you doing? I'm fine, Damon. Good to. It, it was fun to re-listen, revisit those things. Boy, it's fun for everybody to hear those things. And you have just had the most amazing career, and you're still calling games. And it's kind of amazing to see all these moments over the years that you had the chance to be part of. With some space from some of those moments, do you look back and go, boy, that's right place, right time a lot of the times. Yeah, quite often. Uh, <clears throat> and and I, I realize, I think the aspiration, <clears throat> excuse me, of all of us who are lucky enough to do play-by-play, no matter what level, uh, is that you hope you attend a game, a football, basketball, golf event, and and you hope that something magical will occur in front of you. And then the challenge is to to verbally be equal to the moment. And uh, I've been presented with more than my share of great moments, and fortunately, I think, uh, for the most part, been able to capture what, what was there. Oh, I would say so. You can watch the simulcast because Vern is in studio with us right now at watchda.com. You've also worked with a lot of great broadcasters yourself. And I thought one of the coolest anecdotes in this book was about Keith Jackson. We know Keith Jackson and what type of personality broadcaster he was. He had the chance to call the miracle on ice in 1980 instead of Al Michaels and said he's going to pass on it. That was an amazing story. What happened there? Well, it, uh, that anecdote uh, had, had its birth at the Liberty Bowl. I know everybody remembers that Liberty Bowl. Uh, Penn State defeated Tulane 9-6 to in a thunderstorm. Uh, and to give you some, <laughs> some idea of my status at ABC, I was the sideline reporter, so I got to, uh, not, not to diminish the impact of sideline reporters. I would never do that, but that was my role. And I worked with Keith and, and Eric Parsegia. And Todd Blackledge, by the way, was a redshirt quarterback on that Penn State team. Wow. So it's a few years ago. Yeah. So the night before the game, and this was uh, late December, and, of course, the Olympics uh, were going to start in Lake Placid in February. And I must hasten to add that Keith told me this anecdote, and I I would never doubt the, the sincerity, but I'll bet you if you cornered Al Michaels, he would say it never happened that way. But here's how. here's what Keith told me. Yeah. Uh, we were five or six of us were in his his suite, which meant he had a couch in his room. Uh, yeah, that was maybe a pullout couch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. hide the bed. That's really know, nice, just in case. <laughs> Luxury. Oh gosh, uh, and somebody asked him if he was going to do ice hockey at the Olympics in Lake Placid in six weeks, and I can't do justice to to Keith's voice, or but because it's one of the great voices we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, he said, no, big fella. Uh, they're going to let some young person do ice hockey. <laughs> There's a young man from West Allis, Wisconsin. His name is Eric Hyden. Remember it. He's going to skate in five races in speed skating at the Olympics. He's going to win all five gold medals, and Uncle Keith is going to be right there. Let somebody else do ice hockey. Do you believe in miracles? Wow. Yeah. And then that other person, of course, is Al Michaels. Yeah. And then they did a tribute. Uh, Dan and Jerry Fouts, who remained great friends of mine, uh, did a tribute in the Rose Bowl to honor Keith in the spring. And they asked several of us to, to on videotape, uh, remember, remember something about him. And they videotaped me telling that story. And I guess Turi Ann, his, his uh, widow, just collapsed. She laughed so hard. <laughs> you, before you were a national voice, were the voice of the Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. on radio during those glorious years of the 1970s and early 1980s. That was a traveling road show. People now think of the Cowboys of the 90s with Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith. Boy, what you were able to see and experience under Landry's Cowboys in the 70s must have 
topped everything that happened in the 90s as well. How crazy were those years? Well, in my view, they did. And and the, the fortunate thing, Damon, is that I was the same age as all of those players. So yeah. we had that in common. And those friendships have been sustained over the years. Uh, we have a ga- gathering. It started at, at three former players and their wives and Nancy and me. Uh, it's grown a little bit now. But uh, we get together once a year and, and tell lies and, and <laughs> see who. But if you think about the characters on those early Cowboys, Bob Hayes, uh-huh. uh, Pete Gent, who wrote North Dallas 40, uh, Bob Lilly, uh, Don Meredith uh, as much as anybody. Later uh, on, Hollywood Henderson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Who uh, famously said before Super Bowl X. Uh-huh. of a certain former partner of mine, Mr. Bradshaw. <laughs> and Terry still gets angry about this. Uh, Henderson was quoted as saying, he's so dumb he couldn't spell cat if you spotted him the C and the T. Uh, and I know that I know that Terry is not fond of that He quote. didn't like that in 1975. He still doesn't like that. No, 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 not <laughs> at all. But they were great characters. Uh Pete Jant wrote a story, as I said, called North Dallas 40, and it is a phenomenal bestseller uh, in the late 70s. There's an opening scene in which a pickup truck is going west out of Fort Worth, and guys are in the back, and they're going on a bird hunt. And uh, Pete attributed the fella in the pickup truck bed as pulling out his shotgun and started firing first at road signs and then at birds. And he, he made it sound like it was Bob Lilly. Well, Bob <laughs> is the quietest, gentlest man you can yeah. ever imagine. Mr. Cowboy. Oh, yeah. Uh, quickest guy off the defensive line I've ever seen. Uh, so Bob, Bob and I talked about the book because it really, and, and the movie, the movie sold ton. Nick Nolte was the star. And... Uh, Bob said in his gentle West Texas way, the only problem I had is that was Pete Gent standing up and he made it sound like it was me. (laughs) But I just, those were great years for me and for the Cowboys. And uh, according to Tex Ram, they never came up with the idea of America's team. That was NFL films and Steve Sable, Ed Sable really, and, of course, it was appropriated immediately by the Cowboys. And and they were. They could have been America's team for the decade had the Pittsburgh Steelers not stepped in and said, we got something to say about this. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Vern Lundquist joins us in studio. So here's a little anecdote I've never told you. I never told anybody here. My wife is a Kentucky grad. So she's an SEC girl. She's got roots in the South. And I'm a huge SEC fan. And I know you... A little bit through CBS, but also through two of my really close friends, Andrew Catalan and Carter Blackburn, who always had amazing things to say about you. So we got married this past summer, and we were thinking about an officiant. And we said, what, what, who would we ultimately want to officiate our wedding? And the Bourbon Bell and I both said, what do you think about Vern? What oh do you think about gosh. Vern? And, oh, my and gosh. My wife is a huge fan of you, and like I said, roots in the SEC in the South. And I said, you know... I could reach out and see if we can make that happen. And she said, well, we have to make sure we put him and Nancy up in the nicest hotel and fly them out here, and would they be able to do it? And ultimately, we both said, the only problem would be, and I didn't know about your status or anything like that, but you would be swarmed by all of our guests all night long. <laughs> I said, everybody, it would, for you, you would have to tell the same story about 3,000 uh, times. Uh. So I said... I probably will will let Vern sit this one out because it will be a hassle for him, but that's how much we both think about you. And you had just an amazing run with the SEC on CBS, yeah. and it rose you to a status that was probably unlike anything you would have expected. Is that is that kind oh, of Oh, gosh, how it yes. Felt? Well, first of all, Damon, I'm very honored that you were considered. No problem. Uh, I've done one wedding in my life in Colorado. You don't have to be a licensed minister. And a friend of ours had a daughter getting married in our uh, music pavilion in Steamboat. And she asked if I would do it. And I swallowed hard. And I said, my father, the Lutheran minister, the late father, is going to just flip. 
when he hears that I married somebody. <laughs> but I went ahead and did it, and the highlight, the biggest memory for me of that occasion is that the ring bearer was the family dog. Oh, is that yeah. right? Just... It, it made it kind of memorable. Uh, the dog wandered down Big the little aisle. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the, the, the SEC was not my choice. Uh, I'll keep this as simple as I can. I kept hearing rumors that Dick Enberg was not happy at uh, NBC after 30 years, a, a three-time Hall of Fame career. Uh, and I was told, be aware, because Dick is reaching out to CBS. And I said, he would never come over here unless he was the number one guy, right? Well, we had a number one guy, and it was Jim Nance. And all of a sudden, I got a call from Sean McManus, my boss, the chairman at CBS. And this would have been uh, the fall of 1999. Right. And... Uh, I had actually called him and asked him to call me back, and I said, I keep hearing these rumors. He said it would never happen. Uh, Dick's too high-profile a guy, and he's too expensive, and he's got 30 years invested in NBA. I just can't see that happening. And then he paused, and he said, Now, in the unlikely event that we were to sign Dick Enberg, how would you feel about doing the Southeastern Conference? And I said the appropriate things and hung up and looked at Nancy. We were in the kitchen. And I said, honey, pack your bags for Tuscaloosa. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. And, and uh, so I was, uh, not, I was never rebellious, but I was not happy about it. Uh, they had, lied, uh, they had, di- uh, had decided to not renew Sean McDonough's contract. He was... He was doing the SEC. That's the nature of this business. Uh, he kind of did okay for himself at ESPN. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But I came in, uh, and uh, uh, my first game ever was Florida at Tennessee. Uh, I just heard from Philip Fulmer two weeks ago about a totally other thing. He was the coach at Tennessee. And Jesse Palmer, the bachelor, uh <laughs> I, I, that was a little more derisive than I meant it to be. <laughs> I could tell the tone of your voice yeah, how you I felt didn't. about that the came a, That came across <laughs> sarcastically, and I don't mean that, Jesse. I'm sorry. But Jesse Palmer led his team 80 yards in less than a minute and a half and found Jabbar Gaffney for a touchdown, and they won it by three. And uh, to this day, Tennessee fans will tell you he never caught the ball. <laughs> Uh, but that was my introduction. I looked at Todd Blackledge, my partner, and I said, are they all like this? And he said, enough of them. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the association was just brilliant. I mean, and, and the BCS helped because it made every game important right. in every part of the country. And then, God love them, the SEC won seven straight national championships. So all of a sudden... Uh, we're in the stratosphere. And what a rise it was. What a run it was. Vern, I could do three hours with you, but I know you've got places to be, and I just want to make sure everybody knows the book is out, play-by-play, calling the wildest games in sports, from SEC football to college basketball, the Masters and more, an iconic legacy, an iconic career. This is a true honor for us to have you here in the studio, specifically for me. So thank you so much for finding time. Uh, thank you, Car- uh, Carter. We're talk- talking Carter Blackburn. That's a nice compliment <laughs> okay. for you to give. Okay. Uh, let me just correct you. We had to delay the publication. Oh, it's not out yet. By one week. Okay. So it, it'll be published on October 16th. Oh, okay. Uh, they had some issues with binding. Too many good stories in here. There are a few. They needed stronger binding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll accept that. One week from now, check it out. The book, Play by Play, calling the wildest games in sports from SEC football to college basketball to Masters and more by Vern Lundquist. Vern, thank you so much. Thank you, Damon.